pathetic. And you've been Seymour. Yes. From Little Shop of Horrors. Yes. Uh, before we even get into Southpaw, Paul, Southpaw. Yeah. Where the hell did that come from? Uh, Seymour? <laughs> yes. Um, well, I, I did Constellations on Broadway, this right. amazing play by Nick Payne uh, with Ruth Wilson. And Janine Tesori, who wrote Fun Home, the musical that won Best Musical at the Tonys this year, and is an amazing, you know, um, writer. And she saw Constellations, and she we had a meeting a few weeks later, and she said, "I'm doing these things at this thing at the City Center. I'm the artistic director there, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called the Encores. It's obviously, you know, Encores, and we're doing a Little Shop of Horrors and." Alan Green is going to come back and reprise her role as Audrey, and um, I think he'd be great to do Seymour. And I and I said, do you have some instinct that I know how to sing? And um, uh, she said yes. And then did you have any instinct that you know how to sing? At yes. No, I didn't. Just like I, I yeah, I sing. I sing. With, uh, have sung since I was a little kid, and um, my family's really musical, particularly my father and. Um, and I grew up with my mom taking me to like tons of musical theater and theater in general. Mm -hmm. um, but even when we didn't we didn't go, you know, it was something that her grandparents, you know, they brought to her when she was a kid, and so she just sort of passed it down. So this strange fluency in that world. Mm -hmm. um, and so yeah, when Janine asked me, I I I thought, oh, I don't know. And then she sent me a. Um, Backstage, she sent me a plant with a cut-up Barbie doll and blood all over it, and she said, "Just do it." With a note that said, "Just do it," and that kind of sense of humor, which I know most Little Shop of Horrors was written with, mm -hmm. um, and the whole sort of production sort of ended up being filled with, uh, made me laugh, and I thought I would love to do it. And, and did you know the show? I guess. Um, of course. You know, I mean, I should say, of course I knew the show. I just was intimidated by the situation, and you know, wondering whether or not you know I could take the time and try, you know, pull it off. Well, whenever yeah. I think of Rick Moranis, I think of you yes. next. Yes. You're pretty much the Rick Moranis of your generation. Good. So. Then I'm doing what I should be doing. Was it, so is that part of it intimidating at all, going very much against type and expectation, or is that part of the fun? No, I, it's, it's my love of the role. It's my love of the show. And, mm -hmm. and, and to me, I don't really think about that. I think about the fact that I love the music, it's brilliant lyric, lyrically and musically. It's a ton of fun and filled with tons of joy. And the scenes are like the book of the musical is so funny and, mm -hmm. and brilliant in this way. And I just thought, what a great place to go. You know, I don't, I don't really think so much about, well, this is going to be against type. It's sort of, oh, look at that land over there. That land looks kind of interesting. Maybe I'll go search that out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit like... Uh, you know the old Nintendo game Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have did you have enough time to prep for something like this, or is this one of those things where you have to kind of jump in and you only six have days of rehearsal, six, six days, days of rehearsal. rehearsal, yeah, and then four performances over two days. So. So was that actually fun to have a limited window? I know this is like where that. the word fun becomes a little complicated. Um, fun, yes. I mean, f I mean the most talented people, musically and. Uh, just I, the most talented people I've worked with ever really in that way just like the the, the, the women who played the urchins like they're um, they were absolutely brilliant and everybody and working with Ellen is she's so brilliant and a piece of history theater history and also she's just so brilliantly talented but you know to me honestly the thing about that was that um, I was sitting there I thought when I was a boy and I saw the movie she was she was this mix of like sexuality and as a young kid, you know, and this oddity I couldn't seem to understand and all the things that she really is. But as a boy watching it, um, sort of fell, fell in love with her, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we first did the first reading and we did the first sort of sing through, um, and I, we did Suddenly Seymour and then we did a couple of the other numbers, but particularly Suddenly Seymour. When I watched her sing Somewhere That's Green, mm -hmm. I realized that I had, I literally, this is not an exaggeration, I realized why I had done all of the work I'd done up to that point to get to this place. I went, mm -hmm. I never had that experience really where I went, 
this is something I really truly earned, and it's to be a part of history like that. And I and um, it's almost like I met the little boy who watched the movie for the first time in the moment, watching her sing again. You know, they all, all that stuff. I went, oh, now I realize why I've been blessed to make all these films. It's to get to this moment to work with her, mm. and um, felt like that every night on stage. Every night on stage was like that. That sounds so great. Yeah, it was a joy. I mean, it was like, I think, I think joy for the audience. A joy for us up there, mm -hmm. an extraordinary honor that's sort of totally inexplicable for me. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I guess you'd say against type, and I guess in that way, also a real honor. Um, but just the community. And Janine Tesori, who made it all happen. I mean, Darren Killam, who's so brilliant also on stage. Not only funny, as we all know he's funny, but also incredibly talented in so many ways and working with him. Um, and I mean, everybody, geographies, I mean, it was like there's some sort of thing. And I think that thing that came together was what Janine put together. Mm -hmm. And it says and speaks volumes to her as, a, as an artist that she's able to sort of see other artists and see what they're capable of before anybody has said, this person's capable of it and we believe in it. I mean, that to me is the definition of anybody who I would want to hang out with and be honored to hang out with is someone who says, I see something before everybody else sees it, mm -hmm. you know? And you get to see the world in a new way, you know? And, and that's what she does. So that was the experience. It was just so much joy. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. I've never seen audiences come backstage and just be smiling and we're all smiling. <laughs> and I think it's also just, just a testament to Howard and Alan who wrote it. Yeah. It's one of the great pleasures of a show. It's just... It's a masterpiece. Yeah. I mean, it's truly a masterpiece where you, you lyrically, you know, and, and musically, it's just, there's really nothing like it. There's really nothing like it. I, I remember being on stage with Ellen and when her character dies, and I was so moved before she finally, you know, she goes, she, I go, are you okay? She goes, yes, <laughs> no. And then she falls down, and then she goes, when I die, which should be very shortly. You know, and she has these things, and I've never been in a situation as an actor where I'm genuinely moved and in a space that is um, sort of filled with this sadness and this melancholy, and the audience is hysterically laughing. I've never been in that space mm -hmm. where you go, wow, what an interesting space emotionally. I, I had no material that I've, I've you know, had the pleasure to speak or act or perform has ever elicited that sort of response in both me and then the audience. It, it's a really special piece. So I could talk about it for a long, but it was basically just a lot of joy. Well, Southpaw not, didn't have the laughter, does not have the laughter in the audience. No. <laughs> not a lot of giddiness. No, no. <laughs> Southpaw. No.